Oh, I watched Man United actually, right? I watched United v Leicester. Um, Leicester or Leicester v United for the final game of the season. It was the game that was essentially going to decide whether we not we play Champions League football. And considering how we came into the game, ill form, tired players, I think we finished it pretty well. The game itself wasn't very good. Not gonna lie, Jeremy, it wasn't the most entertaining match in the world. Leicester had a few players missing. Um, they probably would argue that they might have finished the first half stronger than us. Then we came out the second half. Um, you know, fast out of the blocks, a lot more pressing, a lot more um, progressive, a lot more positive in our attack our fullbacks got forward a lot more we were trying to press their defenders a lot more our midfielders took back control i feel for the sport for what could be said i still feel bruno fernandez probably was the weaker of the midfield trio he probably lost the ball the most amount of times and kept forcing things and didn't play it simple but you know he's always going to currently really do that at the moment in his current setup but i thought we kind of took a charge in the second half and kind of really brought it to leicester and i always thought that we had a goal in us i just didn't know where it was going to come from we got a bit of a lucky break in terms of getting the goal via penalty we've had a lot of the penalties but i think that goes to show the level the, the change in level that soul shark has brought to united i feel like we're a team now that's able to cause problems for the opposition inside the box i always felt that prior to Oli Gantoso's arrival most of our goals came through moments of brilliance or from just the players deciding to score a goal right to just figuring out themselves now i feel like we have some kind of pattern to play it's not the most expressive and fluid as I'd want it to be right it just seems to be you know it seems to hurt teams a lot on a counter but it doesn't seem to hurt teams a lot when we build up I'd like to see it you know those kind of balls those kind of uh free pass triangles we do in outside the box between like I don't know a Bruno a Wan-Bissaka sometimes and a Martial or Rashford whoever's on that side I'd like to see a lot more of those kind of done in the midfield and then kind of switched outside to flank brought inside just kind of a, a more textbook United goal we don't really have that in our repertoire just yet we just have the counter attack which is you know not, it's not something Something to scoff at but i want to see a bit more so um i think the penalties have is directly correlating with the fact that we play a lot more we play better football now so because of that we are committing more defenders inside the box especially with players like martial greenwood rashford even james uh, you know if he's been able to put in proper if, if he gets put in behind the back line you know he's always going to win you a free kick or a penalty um inside that area so once we got the penalty it wasn't a surprise really um if anything johnny evans probably was a bit unlucky because he he played pretty well he turns to always play well against us um probably he has a point to prove in that respect but i thought he started off the game really strong um he unfortunately tried you know it, it, it's happened a lot when you i remember when i used to play center back sometimes you always feel sometimes you can always get the your head you always think you can get the ball i think that's probably the, the what separates the all right defenders from the really great ones is that the all right ones think they can always get the ball so they always kind of think they can nick it but you can't what what you see and by the time you're reacting is you know there's there's way too much milliseconds in between that can't surpass and then if that player is clever enough and they keep the and they keep their body between you and the ball you're not gonna you know there's no way you're gonna flick it out of their path you're definitely gonna commit the foul especially for players that you know the more cultured players are gonna make sure they kind of draw you in so you can see what he tried to do unfortunately it didn't work um it kind of worked for us in that regard got the penalty and luckily bruno had the legs enough to slot it in before that i was really worried him taking it because even though he got no, I think he got s s smashed in the middle of the park I forgot who by he was really annoyed with it and he kept moaning and moaning and then he or he just seemed to lose any kind of steam he had he was already looking tired anyway he already looked really fatigued then that tackle just took it the last bit of breath out of him he tried to regain it a bit but he just seemed out on his feet and then even when the even when um, Peter Casper Schmeichel didn't give him the ball back. I think he noticed he was breathing out of his ass. He just left the ball in front of him and he had to walk across to go get it and come back to the spot. He was really out of breath. So to see him kind of reinvigorate after he scored the penalty was also many. And of course, um, Solskjaer was kind of took notice of that and took him off, which was great to see. And then since, and then after that, I kind of felt as if we might put the control back into Leicester's hands but we handled the game pretty well good game in game management from us even the free kick towards the end of the play we didn't really try and hit the goal we just tried to keep possession and then we get rewarded we'll go right at the end and Lingard you know one of our one of our players who's probably suffered the most throughout this period you know he started off really well when it's since the changes in managers and our changes in form he's really kind of 
um, his form has dropped and of course a lot of it has to do with the stuff he has to deal with outside of football too I'm not you know I'm not discounting that but I think as a sportsman as a footballer he probably is very disappointed how the season has panned out for him in general but he was able to kind of cap it in style with a goal towards the end he nicked the ball off Kasper Schmeichel who's trying to build up from the back and yeah um, job done in it 2-0 so all in all good I think we wanted the bare minimum any United fan wanted was for us to qualify for Champions League and we got it Right, we can't complain about that. We can't start moaning and talking about, you know, us not playing expressive football. We need more signings. No, we started off the season just wanting to finish fourth. And we finished fourth with Bruno Fernandes on our side, a player who's quite clearly shown the, us, the fans, um, and the board exactly what's needed, the level we need to be, because he's not even the finished product, right? He's not even the level that we probably not level but he's not even performing at a level that he possibly could given time given good additions given um more time under the current coaching regime or maybe with a different coach whatever right we're not even seeing the best of him yet and look already how he's improved the level of everyone around him right so imagine what two or three players of that same standard in different positions could do so i think that's been the positive that we finished we finished in the top four we finished third actually with one of the you know effectively the third best team in the league which makes sense and we've also done it knowing full well that we need to strengthen our team because Bruno showed us that if we strengthen our team that we have a chance to challenge not to say we're going to win the league that's not going to happen you can't jump you can't make those incremental jumps you know over a season but I think we're heading in the right direction um the only problem I have with it I think going forward is that I'm a little bit worried that they're not going to make the not going to pull the trigger for a director of football I think either we need to know who the director of football is if someone's doing it now at the moment, like on the sly, or we need to size somebody, sign somebody directly to pull that to fill that void. Because I think even if it doesn't work out for Solskjaer, the one thing we can't do is repeat the mistakes of old and have Solskjaer just sign the players that he kind of wants to play his brand of football. And then when he inevitably goes, the other manager that comes in has to replace those four players because he doesn't match what his style of football is. We should operate like all the big clubs where we have a set style of play that's dictated by the director of football or by, you know, whatever body that sits on top and then they go out and headhunt coaches who fit that style of play right and of course the players will be different but they'll definitely fit that overall philosophy that's what we need and i just fear if we kind of give the complete control to social and it doesn't work out we're gonna just go starting from scratch again evidently we have better players whatever manager starts you know whatever manager picks up the mantle from social will have far better players to pick from and a far more cohesive team a better environment you know more uh just a lot more positive sort of you know and um, feeling towards the team going forward but i just want us to be a little bit more purposeful about how we do things and not just kind of you know do things based off just the whims of the manager kind of have an overall goal what we want to do where we see ourselves going a five-year plaque you know what Klopp did at liverpool and what um, man city did with pep Guardiola before he even signed for the club before he was even manager at the club right they kind of prepared for him when Klopp came in he's had a five-year plan i hope we have that kind of thing in place about how how we intend to get back on the top of the mountain to be the champions of England again to challenge for the Champions League we need to have that plan in place and I think that that thing has to come above an oligon so as good as great as he's doing as much as a legend he is this is way above his um kind of uh mandate but it's just interesting to see the split the divide within Man United fans man we've got such a weird fan base now maybe because we've gone through such shit spells but we've got one side of the fan base like the Shreford Paddock lot Stephen House and who just you know they will not have a bad word said about Oli Gunnar Solskjaer they're sort of like Oli and until the cows come home um, they're always about back the manager they're always piping on about you know that sort of stuff they kind of are still on the fence about Pogba still which is really bizarre I guess he kind of just rubbed them up the wrong way with his um, lack of commitment and then on the other side you've got the United stand lot and some and someone like Ransom Bantz who you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can you know can't do anything to win over I think Rance even said once jokingly in a stream oh even if he wins a Champions League or FA Cup he still wants him out of the club like they're just not convinced by him whatsoever they think he was given the job through, through pure nepotism and he was you know he shouldn't be the manager and he's, he's just got no style of play but there's no middle ground that seems like right so I guess that's where I want to feel I want to be be the middle ground of this and be like okay cool you both both sides have valid points as to why they think we should be in a far better position but come on considering where we've been considering the abuse that we went through through the latter season of Van Gaal's reign considering the emotional abuse we went through with Jose Mourinho in charge you know we nearly sold Martial do you know how insane that would have been to sell Martial for what for like a Perisic or something at that time <coughs> insane isn't it like so um even even Mourinho's handling of Fred 
he lobbied for Fred supposedly from the beauty of the stories correctly he really fought hard to get Fred in the club and then as soon as he didn't perform in five games he just completely iced him like insane really 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 insane um but I think we've we've come a long way, really. And again, finishing third this season, considering finishing third this season obviously isn't as great as it would have been past season. I think sixty six points would have finished us six previous season and a bit lower the season before that. And obviously, um, no one could have um, es- no one could have guessed Arsenal and Tottenham would be so shit, right? Considering how um, the season panned out, you wouldn't guess that. Um, effectively, everyone fumbled the ball uh, for f- top four, right? We basically just kept on winning and other teams kept on losing and drawing we took advantage of that don't get me wrong but I still think it's an improving regards I think that the United team under Jose Mourinho wouldn't have no chance of putting that kind of run together uh, prior to lockdown and post lock and post restart I don't think we would have done it under him whatsoever so I still think it's a big improvement and hopefully going forward Solskjaer is given the funds he's given the resources he's given the infrastructure to make him thrive because as as lacking as he might be as a coach in terms of building up a cohesive style of play and being able to impact the game yeah with tactics you know during the game like in-game management is a bit off um he probably makes substitutions too late sometimes his selections can be a bit odd but i still think most of that is to do with the fact that he doesn't really have many good players to choose from and he's keenly aware that the players on the bench aren't good enough to impact the game or make any sort of meaningful change um as Lacking is in than that, I still think if we build a necessary infrastructure around him where you have a director of football, a football director, whatever you want to call him, who basically um, sits down with Oli, has a style of play in mind of what we want, has a certain profile of a player, um, we get those players in, we allow him to, you know, give him the time to train those players, coach them players on the, in that new system and then to kind of see what happens on the pitch with that. I think that's the best way forward, you know. We've already tried the chopping and change of managers. We've tried that. We've seen how it doesn't work with other teams as well. We're kind of, you know, still in the dark ages with how we are structured as a football club in terms of, you know, how we scout, how we acquire, um, even the training and the health fitness in general is a bit off. So we're slowly and truly getting there with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think he deserves the time, especially after finishing third and potentially there's an option of us winning the Europa League. Um, he's done a good enough job for me and I'm going to just happy to see where it goes from there in it. But um, signings are going to be really important, I think, going forward, even more so than maybe my director of football that I would want so desperately. But yeah, let's see what happens with that. Um, 